favorite adverbs, and uh, asked if I can put her on as well. So David and Megan, you may listen to the show in D.C. We've kind of blown up in D.C. recently. I'm not sure why. I'm getting a lot of people from that area. Right, because I was just there in Arlington. Is that what it is? People saw it. Bill Squire. Where are you this weekend? I'm going to be in Canton, Ohio at the Patina Arts Center. You can get tickets at BillSquire.com. I also added some dates in Lorraine and uh, Willoughby. So uh, get all those dates at BillSquire.com. And then I'll be on the road with Chad Daniels out in uh Kansas City and Omaha, so expect some bureau cheese oh, from those places some BC. come March. There you go. Yeah. Where are you going to be this weekend, Mary? Oh, New York City. What? I don't know if you've heard of it. Um, we're in Brooklyn tonight. It's expensive. It is expensive, and the parking is terrible. Who would have thought? <laughs> Who would have thought? No, well, just kind of bopping around that. town. I've got a show in Brooklyn tonight. I've got one at the New York Comedy Club tomorrow. I have dinner with my fake grandparents on Thursday. Oh, I have a boy. show Where are you Saturday going? in Chinatown. I got like four shows this week. Um, I don't know. We're going to some Italian place in, on the Upper West Side by where they live. Look That's at that you. where Little Italy is. No, it's. I'm assuming they can walk there. They picked it. A they place where me, they can walk. Well, they sent me a, a like a link to the restaurant. Was like, hey, here's where we're going. I was like, okay. I mean, right. I'm not gonna ask questions. Are you gonna offer to pay, or are you gonna like reach for the check? And let like like slow reach for it. Probably not. So that the, you're There's just gonna no sit point. there and stare at it. Oh, I got it. What's the point? <laughs> no, but they're taking you to dinner. They're millionaires. Or yeah, lunch and or they asked to take me out. Right. Mm. I I mean that would be a big change in turn of events if they were like, you got this one, right? Welcome <laughs> to the <city." laughs> you know? It's trial by fire. We they're hazing you. What do you talk to them about? Like like you would talk to a grandma. Being rich. Yeah. No, they're all we, rich. I mean, like, they're gonna get so, rich. This will honestly only be the third time that we've hung out, but uh, this is like last like me. I had dinner with grandma last night, so this is like your grandma, kind of. Yeah. yeah, so it, I'm Start sure they'll ask me them. about like the move and like relocating and how I'm liking the city and comedy and you know, life stuff. Ask them for some insider trading tips. I would love you know what I really want. I want them to offer Inside me their house. sources. You want I what? I want them to give me their house. And say you can live in our apartment. We are well, moving to Florida. Can we're you moving house out. You can us? have this. There's people that will be that wintering all the time. in Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I know people that that was their situation. That's where why they were able to live in New York for as long as they were because they were just house sitting for somebody that has a, like a million dollar apartment. Yeah. That'd be Plus, they're probably tired of talking to each other, so they're excited to talk to you well, and in, 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 and uh, introduce you to your new town. They're both retired, and I don't know. Right. They have no kids. Right. So I don't know how many friends they have or what they do. Like, I know the woman uh, takes flute lessons from home, or at least she did last time I saw her. She took flute How'd you meet from them home. again? Uh, I met them at a bed and breakfast in um, California when my sister and I, a couple years ago, went out to the Redwoods, okay. and this old couple was staying at the same bed and breakfast we were, and we got to talking over breakfast, and- he said, "Oh, we live in New York City. We love stand-up comedy. Next time you're out there, come out." And the you're woman like, oh gave me "Oh my god, I play number. the flute too." Well, I did. I, I I didn't play the flute, but she gave me her number, and I texted her. I was like, "Hey, I'm coming to the city," and they're like, "Let's take you to lunch." And then we've kind of just been back and forth. Every couple months, we'll have like a text thread, and then I told them I was moving here. So that's, that's exciting for them. Yeah, they seem to like it. But you don't know the name of the place around. you're going. And if they don't have any kids, you could get into that well. Oh, my God. I might. Who knows? They're, They're super nice dinks. People, though. Don't Old blow dinks. this. Yeah. Don't you, gonna, you, so you, if you wear a goddamn crew neck, you look better <laughs> than you look today. I'm uh, wearing this. You better not. You got to look And I'm not. I'm going to put my hair in a ponytail and take all my makeup off. And my hair is too short for a ponytail. That so actually might like work. They'll be like, oh, she needs our help. I am going to. It's called. Yeah, play up your poverty. Salumeria Rossi. Okay. S A L U M E R I A. And they're in the what? They're early seventies. Um, probably. They're probably in their seventies. Two eighty three Amsterdam. Oh boy, look at you! You're gonna. How much? Amsterdam is seventy fourth. How much is a a plate there? There are no prices on the menu. 
That's that's the mark of a good spot. <laughs> right. Right? Yeah. yeah. A couple of blocks away from the park. But I have specifically avoided Italian food since I've been here because I knew they were taking me to get Italian. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I haven't eaten any pasta or anything since I've been here. You didn't want to blow it? Either. You wanted to save it up for them? Subpar. Uh-huh. Yeah. I didn't want to get some little rinky-dink dish that I could afford when they're taking me out to probably what I'm assuming is a great place. Sure. So we'll see how it goes. Well, their ricotta pancakes are seventeen fifty. That's not bad. That's for brunch. Mm-hmm. You're going for lunch? We're going for dinner. Oh, you're going for dinner. Where did you see prices? You get the PDF. On the I didn't see it on anywhere the website. on there. Uh you know, like twenty dollar salads. The spezzatino is thirty dollars. Manzo, uh twenty nine dollars. That's not bad. I mean they're not gonna, you know. They are they are retired, even oh, if they're rich. I didn't see this. Yeah. They're rigatoni. I didn't see this version. Thirty bucks. Okay, yeah, no, this isn't anything not crazy. Bad. This no. is normal New York prices. Yeah, thirty bucks. These days it's normal Cleveland prices know, for right? Christ's sake. Dude, that's what I was saying when I've been at like every time I open my wallet, I spend fifty dollars. I, and I just can't not, or at least thirty. It's easy to not, do. I have not eaten here for less than thirty dollars. You guys start eating the slices, slicing a hot dog. Dude, That's I'm all you're trying eat. to gain four hundred pounds <laughs> while I'm here. Well, we don't eat too many. So, you know, what happened to Mary? It's it all was, about she was living on slices and hot dogs. You eat two hot dogs and one slice. That's going to be your calorie intake for the day. No, I'm pretty much making everything last two meals. So if I buy dinner. Uh, one night I'll eat that leftover Like I'll only eat half of it And then I'll eat it for lunch the next day So I'm making meals last two meals I'm eating You're smart. significantly less Well uh, it's honestly it's like going back to when In like 2017, 18, 19 When I was basically living on the road Out of my car and I had a $10 a day budget It's back to that Where it's like okay what is the most amount of food I can get That I can make last the longest Yeah you learn how to stretch meals. Yeah so that's kind of what's been going on the last 10 days The first like I've only been here Six days, but the first like two or three, I was so hungry all the time, and then I realized. You feel like a real oh, New Yorker now? It, not yet. Okay. I will feel like a New Yorker when I have an address. <laughs> that is when I will feel like one. But the first couple of days, I was like super hungry, and like in the first two days, I spent like one hundred and fifty dollars on food, and I was like, okay, we got to cut it back. I can't do this every we day. We got to cut this back. Yeah. On the yeah. subject of the, we were talking before the break of pound cakes, happy trails, pictures, or whatever. Mike and Parma points out. That's called the Mohawk to the Bean Star. <laughs> <laughs> hey, shout out to Mike and Parma. He, uh, I got a few of those uh, get down shirts left, and he hit me up. He's like, "Hey, you got any my size left?" And I did. So we met up, did a little drug deal that f- was just a t-shirt deal, hey! but it felt like a drug deal because we're meeting in a parking lot. Uh huh. And I'm like, "You got the money?" He's like, "You got the stuff?" And I'm like, "Yeah, I got the stuff." Good. It's like deep go. throat. Mm-hmm. All the president's men meeting a, meet a Mr. Chicken parking lot <laughs> <laughs> in Parma. Yeah, right there at the Triangle. I felt so stupid too because I'm like, "Where are you located?" And because he messaged me on Instagram, we usually talk on uh, Twitter, but he's he's like, "Hey, you got any two X's left?" And I'm like, "Yeah." Uh, where are you located? And he's like, Parma. I'm Parma, like, oh, idiot. Because I, yeah. I, in on Instagram, he's Mike in his actual last name, not Mike in Parma. So right. Yeah, I was, I was like, duh, I'm so stupid. But hey, yeah. drunk Sue. Thanks, Mike. Hey, baby, how are you? You know, Bill, are you gonna go to Bill's show on Saturday? No, no, I'm not gonna go. Oh, okay. Take that. <laughs> Unless he's gonna count me some tickets or something, but oh, can't no. do that. So. Oh, you picked the wrong weekend to try to get comped tickets, drunk Sue. But he's gonna be right in your backyard. He's at the Purina Arts Pavilion. I know. Is it's that what not it is? Even a mile away no. from my house. It's not Purina. What is it? Patina. Oh, the Patina Arts Center. Mm-hmm. Patina. It's Arts at the Pancetta yeah. Arts Pavilion. Yeah. You're not gonna go. <laughs> No. I bet you know where that is, though. Yeah, because she went to see oh, Mary know, there. Know, oh, that's I the same Mary place? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. All right. But I just called and say that all is well with me. And I wanted to tell you that um, Bob took me to Cave Jewelers and got me a beautiful ring. Oh, congrats. To celebrate like an anniversary or what? No, I just it's like a forever ring. Like You've already you know, been together forever. I know, right? Yeah. That's pretty cool. 
But hey, yesterday I wanted to call in. I couldn't get through. But um, you were talking about fly swatters. I was. Yes, indeed you were. I want somebody to invent a SWAT to kill ratio. To kill what? Yeah, like if you SWAT and you miss, draw, boom, boom. But it, if you got like a kill ratio, <laughs> you know, make you SWAT one and you kill one. Yeah. It should be able to keep track of that. Because I would tell you what, I'd be over 50%. Okay. I'd well, probably be around in the 75 percentile yep. on, on on SWAT to kill. Okay. Oh, your aim is, I, is I true. I sneak up on them. I sneak up on them. Bam. Before they make, and they, when they, see, here's where people make mistakes. They don't realize that when a fly takes off, it back. It, go, it goes backwards. backwards. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So I mean, but but it. I knew that, and I'm pretty dumb. So maybe a lot of people know that. Well, maybe some people do, and some people don't. But that's why they. I mean, every time every time I talk about fly swatter, there's one or two people that text me and go, "You just got to get a salt gun." I'm like, I'm gonna fill the walls with salt around here. There's equipment in here. I can't be firing salt all over the place. That's why I need a fly swat. No. I love killing flies. And I, I stop. Well, them it's, too. it sounds like you've uh, you've got the skills. I do. I stop them little suckers. Sue, didn't you leave me like kind of a sad voicemail? Um, probably. Are you okay? Yeah. Now, yeah, okay now that you now. got that rock from Bob, yeah. Well, no, it's not just that. It's just I was just so sad about my kid and stuff. I understand because of the holidays and all that. Yeah. Yeah. I understood. Was in a rough spot. I understand. Okay. I just want to make sure you were okay. I'm okay. All right. Good. That's why I was calm. Like oh. you know, all is well in drug two households. All right. Good. All right, well, glad to hear it. All right, I love you guys. All right, love you too. Thank you. There's Drunk Sue, who's doing just fine. Are they taking Mary to Mendy's? No. <laughs> I didn't tell you Soup's that not about a hot meal. dog. Soup's <laughs> not a meal. Did he crumble any crackers into it? That's a nice place. Brett in Columbus says, Alan, I Photoshop all my D pics. I put a face on it, put it on a motorcycle, laying on a beach. See, that's a nice touch. Shows you care. Then it looks like you have adventurous junk. You know, like it's out doing things. It doesn't need to be waiting for you. It's got a life to lead. It's got a mind of its own. Didn't we hear that growing up? It's got a mind of its own. I can't control it. Mm, mm, mm. Alan, I don't know what drunk Sue looks like, but I bet she was a piece back in the day. <laughs> well, we've all met her. Uh, do we think that she was a piece back in the day? I mean, she's from San Diego. You know, maybe when she was uh, young and sun-kissed. She was <laughs> working out there and doing her thing. Doing her thing. Al, I bet that that fly probably didn't exist in the first place. Sue was just hammered and thought it did. <laughs> I mean, I don't know if it rises to the level of uh, hallucinations. But, um, you know. You know. I'm glad that she's okay. Because she will invariably, uh, and not infrequently, send me, like, overnight voicemails where she sounds like she's getting ready to throw a strap over the well, shower she's curtain had rod. had rough the I understand. Years, so, I just yeah. want to clarify with her. Yeah. Make sure she's all right. I'm getting surrounded by, like, the ghosts of my... I was thinking about mm -hmm. this because a guy that I worked with in Chicago for a cup of coffee 30 years ago just died. And there's more... He's about 10 years older than I am. And it was very, very brief when I was just kind of getting going. Uh, he just died. And I was like, that's wild. 
And so I'm starting more and more to hear stories about people that I have known over the course of my career who are dying. And it's weird. It's very strange. Uh, I got sent a copy because I'm in it. There's a guy who, um, the, the radio station that I started at in Chicago is no longer there. It got uh, winnowed down to nothing, and it was bought and turned into a religious station or something, but it was called The Loop. It was like a, a legendary rock and roll station in Chicago, and that was where I got my start. Started as an intern, hired as the morning show producer, and kind of went on from there. And a guy who worked there, this was like a, a legendary radio station. It was a template for what would become like a rock talk hybrid, very much like what MMS does now. Um, and a guy who was a producer there a little bit after me is also an author, and he's authored a number of books, and he wrote a book about the kind of, it's like an oral history of this radio station, and I'm in it. And as I'm, and I was so excited to read this book because it's it's very very nostalgic for me. Again, these are going back. I mean, the radio station was at the top of the heap before I even got there, so they they had already you know. So there's a lot of it that I wasn't aware of before my time. But it's so wild to read this book. I never read the whole thing. I just he just sent it to me, and so I just started digging into it. But there's all these old pictures, and there's like people who aren't alive anymore that I knew and worked with. It's very strange to get to that point now, to look through this thing and go like, oh, my God. I mean, it's this amazing walk down memory lane. But, you know, that on top of reading today, and I hadn't even seen it. Chris Ty texted me, and he goes, did you see Ian Punnett died? I go, nope, I did not. And these are not old people. They're just people that I've known over the course of my career. And it's, it's weird to read about it and see these people pop up. And one of these days, mark my words, that's going to be me. They're going to be uh, texting pound cake on his island in the United Arab Emirates. And they're going to go, did you see Alan Cox died? And he's going to go, who? And they're going to go, that guy from the thing. He's going to go, oh, man. Like, oh, well, yeah. Remember that guy? He's constantly correcting my grammar. Oh, hey, will his funeral be streamed? <laughs> I mean, I I have yet to see a streamed funeral of anyone I've known, but I've seen a, a couple of them. Yeah, yeah. And we've all had friends die, not even just colleagues, but like friends, right? Mm -hmm. And it's weird. I experienced my first friend death. That was recently. No, no, no. This was seventh or eighth grade. Wow. Yeah, it, that was that was really really tough, and our school was really really small, so it was it was a massive blow. I mean, my first friend died in when we were in kindergarten, and then from then on, that's that's a wild scene too. Yeah. Because you're old enough to know what's what. Kind of. Well, really. you don't know the concept of death, really. Well, I spent my life going to funerals, so it was like by the time kindergarten rolled around, uh, I'm sure there were some other kids in my class where that was their first exposure to it, to your point. But, I mean, by the time, it was just weird. One day, Susie wasn't there anymore because she died. She had an enlarged heart. That's crazy. And we were like, and the school's doing like a memorial mass because it was a Catholic school. That was wild. And then you have these just post, sign posts along the way. I was lucky. My grandma died when I was 13, and then my aunt died a couple years after that. I had a friend whose mom died in high school, but um, I think it was my senior year of high school or my freshman year of college before I lost my first friend, and he was in the military, and um, he took his own life. And I remember coming back and seeing friends from high school that I hadn't seen in a couple of years, and it was just like such a surreal thing because we were like 19, and you know, for one of our, our friends to be so troubled and so sad it was just like that was my first experience with it right well because it's strange when you're young because it's almost never natural causes no right no, it's right. suicide or it's something you know but then you get older you get to the point where it's like people are starting to die of natural causes well and that's weird my facebook timeline and not to be morbid but 
it, my Facebook timeline has lately just been a lot of people's parents passing away, and yeah. it scares the crap out of me. I I know, other than Bill, everyone here has like lost a parent, and I just it's like my biggest fear because obviously my mom is everything. So I just I don't know if I have the ability to cope. And everyone's like, oh, well, you have to. I'm like, I mean. But you don't know how it's going to affect you until it happens. And, I mean, with the relationship that you have with your mom and, like you saying, she is everything to you, it's going to hit you like a ton of bricks. That's going to be, so, yeah. Why are we talking about this? This is so sad. That's why I'm talking about This is so sad. Because I got the notice yeah. that this guy that I used to work with died. Yeah, right. But, I mean, like. Guy you worked with is different than Pound Cake's mom. Died. Oh well, yeah. Like, he, 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 <laughs> you, you, your mom said she was going to throw herself on your casket. I mean, mm. the Ouija board said you were gone in a couple of years from now. So, if that thing is true, and I have no reason to believe it won't, it is a Ouija board. I mean, it's pretty much unimpeachable. Well, I don't know. She it's th- wisdom. I don't know. If she'll still throw herself on my casket after I sent her the clip of us talking about the Sims yesterday. <laughs> you she, sent that oh, to her. Yeah, I sent it to her. <laughs> Why? I, me and my brother. Such a me and my mom, and my brother have a group chat, and I sent it to my brother, and my mom was like, "Y'all bitch ass." Like <laughs> she was like, "Y'all bitch asses," and then I didn't hear nothing else from her. Wow, bitch asses. Yeah, Pound Cake used to go into his mom's Sims and blow up her house for fun. For fun, for a good time. <laughs> Just to ruin her hobby. <laughs> yeah. Alan Poundcake's going to dig you up and have a little feel-feel down your pants to see what you're packing. I'm going to be- Better hope you're regular I'm gonna be, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be cremated, so that's not going to be an issue. They call Cody to identify the body. <laughs> yep, that's him, all right. Oh, that's him. <laughs> I remember that sweet ass. <laughs> I see it. <laughs> yeah. All right, yep, time to take a break. Mary's got to go. Okay, bye. I love you. Bye. See you Thursday. Thursday. Yes. See you Thursday. Hopefully next time I see you, I have a home. Yeah. Fingers, fingers crossed. crossed. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll break. You want to get the last word in? Uh, shoot me a text. 35192 and we'll be back. This is the Alan Cox Show. Every